Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Sunday. Well, you saw that spectacle, America, in New York City, where Donald Trump went to the wake of a heroic police officer who was murdered during the course of a stop and check on a vehicle. And then you saw three Democrat presidents, two former and one sitting, basically 20 minutes away at Radio City Music Hall at a $25 million fundraiser where the upper ticket was half a million dollars, cutting jokes with Stephen Colbert. Now, this is indicative of something bigger, I think, than what most people are saying, which is look at the contrast. Of course, it's that. But it is indicative of where we are as a country. We have a ruling class in America, a ruling class. It's not an official ruling class, but it is a group of individuals in different industries with different platforms who have seized authority over this country. The vast majority of them live and work on the East Coast, in Washington, D.C., and New York City, with some in Los Angeles. Tens of millions of Americans are not represented by this ruling class, which is why so much of what they promote in their media has nothing to do with you, or has no interest, or is actually promoted in order to sabotage your lifestyle and your liberty. Transgenderism, it's a tiny fraction of a tiny percent of the population. You wouldn't know it. Systemic racism, there's not systemic racism in America, but it is critical that that be promoted in order to attack the broad middle class. Climate change. Climate change is nothing more than the degrowth movement, the deindustrialization movement, dressed up as some kind of uh, environmental movement so they can do things through the back door that they can't do through the front door. The vast majority of the middle class wants nothing to do with this, doesn't know about it because it's not really relevant to them. And that's why you're under attack. You see, ladies and gentlemen, most of what goes on in this country does not go on in Congress. Most of what goes on in this country is not a result of actions taken by the people you elect, your so-called representatives. The vast majority of what's taking place in the country today is my executive fiat, executive orders, bureaucratic regulations. The EPA has decided that the single-family home for the middle class will be destroyed, that you're to live in high-density high-rises with public transportation. Hence, the automobile needs to be destroyed. What's this EV stuff? Nobody wants it, even though Washington is subsidizing it and the New York Times is promoting it, because you want your gas-powered combustion engine vehicles and trucks. Well, Washington just said, you don't get it. Well, who voted for that? Nobody. Biden did it through his EPA. And they say, we'll have cleaner air and cleaner water. Of course we won't. It has nothing to do with that. It's a massive inconvenience, and the intention is to limit the ability of the middle class to be mobile, to live the lives that you want to live, and so forth and so on. This whole DEI thing is set up, again, to attack the middle class. Most people don't even know what DEI is, but it is something that has been pushed by the radical left Marxists in our universities and colleges, and hence by the Democrat Party and the media. So merit is thrown out the door. Instead, we have reverse racism, reverse segregation. According to the Democrat Party, which used to support openly racism and segregation, this new kind of racism and segregation is righteous. And so they promote it. And so, so much of what goes on in this country is deleterious to the middle class. They're attacking our traditions. Now they're attacking Christian nationalists. What does that mean? Well, they're suggesting that if you're Christian and you support America, you must be part of the Klan or something, Christian nationalists. They're embracing Islamists. Why are they embracing Islamists? Because they're critical to their base and because the Marxists and the Islamists have the same thing in common. What's that? To completely upend our society, your faith, your religion. They're trying to indoctrinate our children through our elementary schools and secondary schools, high schools, certainly colleges and universities, to separate them from parents, to separate them from the morals and ethics and family values they've been taught 
and instead embrace the radical left agenda and bigger and more centralized government. This is all intentional. They're poisoning our institutions. They're devouring our institutions. Uh, they are accusing people who stand up against them as being against democracy and being extremists. So Donald Trump, hence, is Hitler. And anybody who supports him is part of MAGA. And MAGA, of course, is like the Third Reich. No, MAGA is made up of hardworking Americans who pay their taxes, plumbers, electricians, farmers and ranchers. It's made up of people who make this country work. And the funny thing is, these elites in Washington, D.C., and New York, if we had to rely on them to eat, we'd all starve to death. They produce absolutely nothing. They don't do anything with their hands. They are totally out of touch with what goes on in the central part of America, or put a better way, that goes on not on the both ends of America. Why do you think they want to get rid of the Electoral College? So middle America, Southeast America, Southern America, Northern Plains America have no representation. If it's just a matter of voting, the more dense the cities and the metropolitan areas, the more powerful they will become. In essence, 9, 10, 11 states will have control of the entire electoral system. So the Electoral College, you see, is now said to be racist and set up by slavers. What I'm trying to point out here is what the Democrat Party is doing, it's at war with the middle class. It's at war with working Americans. Now, union bosses may not get it. They may not care. They're selling out their membership, too. And they'll throw little tidbits out to you or little pieces, little crumbs to you. Oh, we'll have a $20 an hour workday, which, of course, destroys jobs and destroys businesses. Then they'll use Marxist propaganda, class warfare. Let's get the rich. Let's get the corporations. Let's get them. And yet, the biggest concentration of money, the biggest concentration of power, and I mean police power, it's not any one corporation. It's the federal government. Look, there's not a single corporation that has control over your life. There's not a single corporation that can tell you what to do or put you in prison. The federal government not only is ubiquitous financially, but it's ubiquitous in terms of the police state, and it's growing. And it doesn't want any opposition, which is why the Biden administration has done more since any administration, but perhaps Woodrow Wilson, to silence speech, to silence speech, to censor speech, to monitor speech. Two federal courts have so ruled, and they're 100 percent right. They've done more than any prior administration to intimidate political and ideological opponents, shutting down parents to the extent they can by threatening them with the FBI if they dare to stand up to the teachers' unions, which are crucial to the Democrat Party, or throwing pro-life protesters in prison, even though they haven't committed any, any acts of violence. They're just protest they're true peaceful protesters, trying to secrete agents in the Catholic Church and then trying to cover it up. This is a big deal, America, what they're doing and what they've been doing. And most of all, trying to put in prison and bankrupt their greatest threat politically, which is Donald Trump. And we know the Biden administration has had its hands in Letitia James's case, in Alvin Bragg's case, in the Fannie Willis case, and, of course, in the federal cases. This is the Democrat Party. Now, it is very important to understand that when they talk about the rich, and they talk about, you have a right to free health care, and they, none of that really matters to them. They know that if you fall for that, you're going to vote for them, and they're going to become more and more powerful, and even more, their administrative state's going to become more and more powerful. It will decide what medical treatment you get, if any. It will decide what prescription drugs you get, if any. Does that work anywhere in the world? Pick any socialist-slash-Marxist regime, even a fascist regime. Does that work anywhere in the world? No. And, of course, they're attacking your traditions. They're attacking America's values by attacking America's founding. We're told the country wasn't founded in 1776. Well, that's new to all of No, no, 1619. You need to be re-educated. You need to understand this. We're told that the Constitution of the United States was set up to protect slavery and white supremacy. Really? Where does that come from? It doesn't come from anywhere. It comes from their ideology. It's that simple. I want to read something to you very briefly. 
because this professor said it better than I could. His name is Ted McAllister. He's professor of public policy at Pepperdine University. A couple years back, he wrote, Today we have a very different elite than America did as recently as the 1980s in terms of their nature, goals, ambitions, style, and ways of exercising power. He said, The deepest fact of our time is that America has a bad elite, a mendacious one whose skills, values, goals, tastes, and types of knowledge are hostile to our nation's inherited cultures and plural people. The new elite that has emerged in the last generation or two has no interest in preserving anything but perhaps their own power. They lack historical knowledge and vision, which they supplant by or exchange for the power of transformation and change, intoxicated by the power possible with emerging technologies, inspired by visions that only a deracinated globalist perspective could make attractive, this elite thinks of creative destruction as applied to the culture. He says, as winners in what they imagine to be a meritocratic struggle, they can see nothing of an inherited world worth preserving for their very success. The peculiar characteristics of the revolving power have given to our new elite the soul of adolescent art applied to a global campus. They lack any experiential or historical ballast to weigh them down to slow them in remaking everything according to their desires. For them, streamlining power is key to creation, and the annoying obstacles to their new creations are not really checks to prevent tyranny, but rather limitations. Unnecessary friction in the headlong rush to transform. Now, when you look back at last week at those three Democrat presidents, two X and one current, that's who he's describing. When you look at Schumer, when you look at Sanders, when you look at Hakeem Jeffries, when you look at the whole bunch, that's what we're getting. Let me be abundantly clear. The new bourgeoisie, as Marx would put it, is the Democrat Party. The new proletariat, that would be you and me and the hundreds of millions of Americans who are not represented by the ideological push in our media by the Democrat Party each and every day. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.